So our second panel is made up of um, representatives from the alarm industry, uh, different facets, uh, obviously, of the alarm industry. Um, I'm sure they'll be equally as impressive as our last panel. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with with Chuck. Chuck Moley is from Interface. Prior to that, West Tech. Uh, I was really grateful to have Chuck join us only because a couple years back, I had the opportunity, the rare opportunity, to actually see the West Tech um, Central Station. And uh, that was another bit of an aha moment when I saw what the benefit of video verification actually does to things like false alarms and and, uh, and apprehensions. Um, you know, Chuck is a bit of a, a, a veteran and a pioneer with, with video verification. Clearly, West Tech is one of the leaders providers of it. So Chuck speaks from experience when he, when he talks to the crowd. Um, um, I'm going to um, allow Chuck to maybe embellish a little bit after the first question about his background. But we'll start off, Chuck, with this question. What has been your experience reducing false alarms Arms uh, with video verification, either at West Tech or now with Interface. Sure. So, from a background perspective, I'm not sure how many people have heard of of West Tech, but the the history of the company goes back over 17 years, uh, exclusively doing video verified alarms. Um, you can imagine what it was like doing dial up uh, with video verified alarms back, you know, 15 plus years ago. That was before my time. But the point is, we've been doing it a very long time. Um, that's good news and bad news. The good news is we have a lot of data on it. The bad news is you might consider us a little bit stodgy at times. From a, a data perspective, though, uh, we typically see what the industry sees, which is a 98% false alarm rate across the board. Uh, our data is between 2 and 3% false alarm. We track it extensively uh, for every incident, uh, and the number of incidents we process every year runs uh, in excess of 2 million events. So we have a really good, to the panelists before, data repository that we use to guide and streamline our, our efforts. And um, those are impressive statistics for sure. Um, do you have any kind of statistics on your arrest rate or any comments on how video verification assists in the apprehension process? Yeah, we, we do not track the actual arrest rate. Uh, what I can say is that it's very uh, common to have an intervention, as we call it, where you've got the video backing up, the fact that there's a suspect uh, on premises. Uh, a lot of times we'll have law enforcement on the phone and we'll be able to guide them and direct them, not just about what the suspects look like, but we'll be able to go so far as to direct the authorities if they don't arrive in time, the direction that the suspects, you know, when they left, what, what direction they headed, uh, what kind, type of car they were in, uh, the number, and, and a lot of details like that that do lead to apprehensions. And in our spaces, particularly with the, the higher end, what we call virtual guard services, uh, where you're dealing with jewelry, uh, obviously apprehensions really, really matter. And then I'll, I'll add one other thing, which is uh, the, the prior panelists mentioned that for each apprehension, you've got 25 plus or minus you know, prior incidents that, that you, you, you've stopped from going forward. And we absolutely see that. Um, we have a tight community of customers that uh, primarily national accounts work together to share information on our incident reports, reports that we produce with each alarm. And to the extent we don't catch them that time, uh, we have really good data around uh, using a com combination of incident reports to apprehend a suspect or, or a gang. Oh, appreciate that. Uh, so some people might want to know, uh, Chuck, with with Interface's acquisition of West Tech, Interface being a very um, conventional commercial company, at least to our knowledge, what was the impact that West Tech had after that acquisition? And what's happening today at Interface to leverage what West Tech has done in the past? Sure. So uh, Interface has been in business since 1995. It has uh, hundreds of thousands of locations uh, that are actively uh, alarm monitored. Um, that said, uh, the company had, uh, I'll give you some rough statistics, 70 uh, local sales reps that historically had just sold Berg. Uh, we saw that as a huge opportunity to deploy a video verified solution leveraging the, the West Tech experience and processes. Um, from end of 2012, 
less than 10% of those interface sales reps had actually sold a video verified alarm. So we put together a, a program where we deployed you know, a sales campaign basically. It involves a lot of training and over 75% of the reps uh, by the end of 2013 had sold a video verified alarm. And, and I think the statistics are compelling for two reasons. One, because uh, we didn't cut the price. Uh, video verified stayed at a bit of a premium, and the reps that were used to saying, oh, "I can get you a good alarm," and what do you, you know, you know, what are you paying today? And I can, I can match that. Really had to go sell the value of a verified alarm. And what we found was when you provided that value, and you gave the reps confidence to go actually sell it, it it worked. So uh, it was a it was a pretty I think impressive result um, and, and and a testament to the value of uh, a verified alarm video verified alarm. Excellent, excellent. Um, I know it was briefly mentioned in the last panel, but what what do you foresee in terms of video verification playing in the residential space? Is there an opportunity there? Not an opportunity? Short term, long term? Sure. Um, from a residential perspective, I think it's a, a lot more challenging than for a commercial uh, account, and and I think it goes to the you know, very basic American nature of independence and not having Big Brother watching. Um, that's more uh, kind of a professional opinion with an interface, certainly not an industry opinion. I think there will be residential customers that absolutely want to opt in, and there's probably going to be ways to allow them to opt in in a, you know, streamlined fashion where it's maybe just around the front door or windows, maybe it's exterior. Um, but on the on the commercial front, uh, I, I don't see those barriers, and I, and I think we'll, we'll do well. But um, I, I will say there is one barrier that, that's worth mentioning, and that is the difference between a standard alarm and the type of connectivity you need to those locations, whether it's a residence or a business, and uh, a verif video verified alarm. And it kind of goes without saying that you're streaming video, and anybody who has one of these knows what it's like when you don't have a good signal, what happens to your streaming video. But if you're going to have a video verified alarm, you're going to need to have streaming capability. And that implies broadband. And, and so as, as we talk about this as an industry, I think we need to make sure we don't ignore the infrastructure implications. Infrastructure is near and dear to my heart. Uh, Chuck, <laughs> appreciate uh, your answers very much.